welcome to Autocars highlights from the 2013 Geneva Motor Show. And one half of the story at Geneva is the McLaren P1, the spiritual successor to the F1 supercar of the early 1990s. The P1 is laden with tech and its 727 horsepower twin turbo V8 is coupled to an electric motor that boosts total output to more than 900 horsepower. That's good for 218 miles an hour, but the really groundbreaking development is in the aerodynamic package, which can generate 600 kilograms of downforce, even at speeds well short of its maximum. And that's as much as many Le Mans racers. It's light too at only 1,400 kilos, but it does wear a full-size price tag of some £866,000. Only three examples of Lamborghini's Venino supercar created to celebrate the company's 50th anniversary will be built each at a cost of €3 million Euros plus local taxes. Now the 740 horsepower Aventador-based supercar is described by Lamborghini as a street legal racing car and yes, they are all sold. For something a touch more mundane now, this is the Honda Civic Tourer concept which previews a production version due later this year. What's interesting, honestly, is that Honda is likely to target class-leading rear accommodation in this car. The fuel tank is located beneath the front seats and the torsion beam rear suspension takes rather less room than the multi-link suspension of most rivals. The production version will arrive in September. This is the slightly hard to pronounce Rolls-Royce Wraith, the most powerful and Rolls-Royce claims most dynamic car the company has ever produced. Now, ostensibly the Wraith is a coupe variant of the Ghost, but that definition sells it a little bit short. It's actually shorter of wheelbase and in length, and it's lower and wider than the Ghost it is based on. And Rolls says the interior uses phantom grey leather too. But the most significant thing about it is that it is stiffer to reduce body roll, and it is much more powerful. It has some 642 brake horsepower and, get this, the car uses GPS satellite navigation data to read the road ahead and help put the car in the right gear for an upcoming corner. Clever stuff. Expect it to cost £215,000 when it goes on sale in the autumn. A few things get car enthusiasts excited like the prospect of a new 911 GT3, but this one hasn't arrived without a spot of controversy. For one, there is no manual gearbox option and two, it is heavier than its predecessor. So here we are, the 1430 kilo PDK only GT3 and there's more. PASM variable dampers and a rear wheel steering system are also standard. But then this is a GT3, there is still a limited slip differential and a 468 brake horsepower 3.8 litre flat 6 arrives and it revs to more than 9000 rpm. Besides, it's not as if Porsche is on bad form at the moment, so this might be a slightly different kind of GT3, but we suspect those with the requisite £100,000 are unlikely to be disappointed. When AMG and Mercedes go about making their first ever hot hatchback, they don't do things by halves. At 355 horsepower, the A45 AMG is the most powerful hot hatch ever built. Fortunately, AMG has had the good sense to fit four-wheel drive with that, which is coupled to a seven-speed dual-clutch automatic, making it good for 0 to 60 miles an hour in a sprightly 4.6 seconds. Now, we reckon the A45 will be priced at £36,000 or so. That's more than BMW's 135i, but should prove less than the next-generation Audi RS3. Production is imminent. BMW has done to the 3 Series what it has already done to the 5 Series and created this, the 3 Series GT, with coupe-ish, hatchy looks and near estate practicality. The GT is longer overall and has a longer wheelbase than the saloon on which it's based and therefore has nearly 3 inches of extra legroom in the back. If that floats your boat, it's worth telling you that it goes on sale late this spring, priced at around £1,500 more than an equivalent 3 Series touring model. Alfa Romeo is re-entering the lightweight two-seat sports car market with this, the rather gorgeous 4C Coupe. The 4C weighs around 1,000 kilograms and has 237 horsepower from its 1750cc four-cylinder engine. A carbon fibre tub with aluminium subframes front and rear provide the chassis. Production will start this summer. Expect a price around £50,000, hopefully even under it. The Bertone Jet 2 Plus 2 has been created to celebrate both Aston Martin's centenary and the 60th anniversary of collaborations between Aston Martin and the Bertone Styling House. 
In effect, it is, as you can probably tell, a shooting brake variant of the Aston Rapide and is mechanically identical underneath with a 470 horsepower V12 motor. And if you think it looks rather splendid, you're not alone. But don't get too optimistic. It has been commissioned as a strict one-off by an Aston Martin collector. Officially, this is a concept car, but it wouldn't take such a stretch of imagination to see this FT86 concept as a production variant of the GT86 Coupe. Power and the near 50-50 weight distribution of the Coupe should remain unchanged, but weight and body rigidity would inevitably suffer. Will it make production? Watch this space. And here is the second half of the big Geneva story, La Ferrari or the Ferrari. McLaren says it likes to under-promise and over-deliver, but Ferrari has no such qualms about the statement it makes. It is claiming 0 to 186 miles an hour in this car, it's 300 kph, will take just 15 and a half seconds, a second and a half faster than McLaren suggests. Ferrari, however, declines to comment about its top speed, mumbling something about it not really mattering. Now, like the P1, La Ferrari is a hybrid, but here it has a 6.3 litre naturally aspirated V12, making 789 horsepower alone at more than 9,000 revs, and that's joined by a 161 brake electric motor for a grand round total of 950 horsepower. Ferrari says this is a two-year project and first deliveries are likely to start in the autumn. Just 499 LaFerraris will be built, each at a cost of £1,040,000.